Hi, welcome back to The Lum Room, and this is Geshe Michael Roach. And we're ready now to start uh, the actual uh, back into The Lum Room text. And what's exciting is that we have reached Nyin Chudumba, okay, Nyin Chudumba. And it means, uh, this is an announcement in the text, that we have reached uh, the 17th day of teaching. So don't forget that this entire book was a 24-day teaching uh, by the great Pabonko Rinpoche, who was also a teacher of my teacher's teacher, and one of the greatest books ever written in Tibet. Maybe the greatest, okay? And Nyin Dumba means we're starting on the record of the 17th day of teachings, okay? And that makes us about 80% finished, uh, you know? We started this book, uh, I guess, over 10 years ago. And, and personally, I'm just enjoying the book. I'm not trying to get through it and try to finish in a, by a certain date. I'm not thinking like that. I'm trying to, personally, I'm trying to enjoy it and go through it very with a lot of pleasure and enjoyment. I don't know, maybe like people drink a fine wine, I don't know, but just, you know, you don't rush to finish the bottle. Uh, you just sit and enjoy it, right? So we're enjoying the alarm room together. And personally, I don't care how long it takes. I think we should do it very deeply. And we, in this course, we are going to do it deeply, okay? So we're about 80% finished. There's 24 days total. But don't forget, uh, we finished two of those days already towards the end. And that's the teaching on meditation and wisdom, emptiness. And we did those at the beginning of this 10 years because we wanted to use the meditations during the long rim classes. So we've actually finished about 80% of the text. And uh, I guess we can finish in about four or five more years. And then I made you a promise for dessert. We're going to go to the great, greatest long rim emptiness teaching of ever. The emptiness teaching in this long room called the gift of liberation thrust into the palm of your hand. Uh, the presentation of emptiness is actually not that long. And the reason is that uh, Tsongkhapa did it so well and so long with Manjushri's help. I think Pabonko Rinpoche was thinking, ah, oh, we, we don't have to cover it that much here. So we're gonna go after we finish this long room we're going to go study the emptiness chapter and the meditation chapter from uh, Tsongkhapa's great book on the steps of the path, which is Lam Rim Chemo. And that will take us about six years. So don't worry. Uh, we have only about 10 years left to go. Okay. And then, you know, don't, don't gobble down this uh, fine wine, you know. Enjoy it. Uh, have fun. Uh, I, it's a way of life. Lam Rim is not a book. Uh, Lam Rim is a way of life for the rest of your life. And if you can get Lam Rim teachings for most of your adult life, which I did, uh, you'll be very grateful. It's, it, keeps you, it keeps your life going straight uh, through all the changes that we have in our life. You know, the Lam Rim can be the one steady thing that you keep doing through your whole life. Okay, here we go. All right. Means... Uh, let's talk, I'd like to give you a quotation from that great Bodhisattva, Gyalse Chambu, Shivaha uh, Shantideva. Okay, and here's the quotation. Kangla semki tambarim chente kepa de gula chakzel shing kangla nepa che kyang den delwa dewe jung ne de la kyapsuchi. I bow down to that precious state of mind, to that jewel of that state of mind. Well, what state of mind are you talking about, Shantideva? He says, well, there's a state of mind that if you have it and someone uh, bows down to you, they make incredible good karma. We talked about it in the coffee shop. If you're a secret bodhisattva, which you can be, and you're sitting in the coffee shop and somebody offers you a coffee, they get like a billion years of good karma, okay? It's so cool, it's so sexy to be the person who can quietly make other people 
a billion years of good karma just by buying a coffee from them, okay? But obviously, if they make a prostration to you, they will get intense good karma. Now comes the controversial part. Wouldn't it be cool to be the kind of person that if someone hurt you, they would make good karma? What? <laughs> if someone hurt you, they would make good karma. Come on, Geshla. We know many examples. If you do bad thing to a bodhisattva, you get bad karma for a long, long time. Yeah, but something happens cool. Even if you hurt a bodhisattva, you get dendel. Dendel means you make a karmic connection with them, you see? Even if you yell at a bodhisattva or you say something bad about a bodhisattva, then of course you make a bad seed. But you also make a connection seed with the bodhisattva. It's very interesting. And that will bring you happiness for millions of lifetimes, okay? It's so cool. So if I can become bodhisattva, if I can have bodhisattva's vision, then of course, if someone serves me a coffee, secretly I will give them a billion years of good karma. That's sweet. Oh, and even if they yell at me or they call me stupid, or Geshe Michael, you're stupid, then uh, of course they will make some bad karma, but they will make this karma of connection with the bodhisattva, and that karma is much more powerful. And they will have this very sweet karma of connection with the bodhisattva. So uh, Shanti Deva is bowing down to bodhicitta because of its beautiful qualities. It's like a jewel. It's like a wish-giving jewel. Kanshi gila ke badela kurwan debso ngembe dewa shapat sunkyam. You know, even if you do the worst thing possible to a bodhisattva and you criticize them and you spit on them or you something you you, you say bad things about them, uh, even up to Tengi Dewa Gopadzepe Penyan Chen, up to those that bodhicitta can still give you Buddhahood. Okay, even even from making a bad connection with the bodhisattva, because you made a connection with the bodhisattva. That bodhicitta is so powerful that somehow it's going to take those other people to enlightenment when they criticize you. So that's kind of cool, right? Chanjuki Sengi Penyin Gashik Sumne. This Sumne means uh, our Lama started out the 17th day by reminding us of how cool is bodhicitta. Sung means he, he, he reminded us. Penyin Gashik means he threw in a couple of more benefits about bodhicitta that he did not mention in the previous day. He added some more. And that what's the new benefit we have? Insult a bodhisattva, and you make a connection to become a Buddha. Yay! <laughs> so, okay. Dorna, semdi simbe chese chedam. There's a very important word here called simba. Okay, Z-I-N. P-A, okay, Simba, a uh, very, very important word. And it, it's very difficult to translate into English, but it means, I don't know, when you're in high school and your hormones are flowing strong, which in some men don't finish until you're 85 or 90, I don't know. Uh, but you fall in love with every girl you see on the street, you know, and uh, like we were talking about Don Juan, right? No, Don, Don Quixote, sorry. Uh, like he fall in love with this, uh, this uh, bar girl, you know. What's her name? Uh, I forgot. Uh, I forgot her name. Anyway, uh, if the young man fall in love with this girl in high school, then all the time he's thinking about her, all the time. He, he, he's driving, he's thinking about her. Everything reminds him of this new girl he met in the high school. And that's called Simba. In Tibetan, that's called Simba. His mind is captured by these feelings for the girl. In the Bodhisattva's mind, Simba captured by this feeling that I would like to become a Buddha for everybody. Okay, Simba, that's Simba, okay? Dornam Semdit Simba Chetse Chö means once you, once you have Bodhicitta stuck in your mind, like that cute girl's picture in your mind, okay? From that time, 
They are sangeki you take chengi choose to do it. Then anything you do becomes a, a cause for your enlightenment. Okay. Once you are thinking about this girl, meaning this Buddhahood, then it doesn't matter what you do. That becomes a cause for Buddhahood. And we have a picture here. Uh, it's a guy taking a walk uh, with his dog and his, or a lady taking a walk with her husband and her dog. Uh, just if a Bodhisattva has got the Bodhisattva state of mind in their mind, Bodhisattva vision of dancing between planets, if they have that in their mind, then everything they do is dumb. That's really cool, okay? Like, you don't have to go to the temple and read a Medicine Buddha Sutra. Go for a walk with your dog and your husband, and you, that's Dharma. If you're thinking about this vision that I would like to dance between many planets and help people, if you're thinking about that, then everything you do, you brush your teeth, you know, I don't know, you watch Netflix, everything you do becomes Dharma. Okay, it's very beautiful. It's very, very cool. All right. Okay, let's go to the next sentence. Drupa Nyamna Chepala. Now, he says, let's put it in the context of practice, okay? Drupa Nyamna, Nyamna means, okay, how does this Bodhisattva's vision gonna affect your Buddhist practice? Okay, forget Hagong. Forget meditating on medicine Buddha. Dead some. Forget doing medicine Buddha mantras. Okay? Even if you don't do anything, Drupa, don't think about those high, high practices. Drupa Nyamsa Langje Shi Shima. By the way, this Ma, Tim, is not a negative. It's it's the second half of she, okay? It's interesting, so you have to be careful. It means the, the super foundation, okay? Like the mother foundation, Shima. Chanjuk Narmin dan de nan ni kyan chanjuk isamdila che goki. He says, forget, you know, secret mantras, uh, forget uh, meditation on medicine, even medicine Buddha. Right now, if you focus on this feeling, that I would like to dance between the planets and help all the beings there. You focus on that feeling, and, and that's enough for your practice. That's extremely powerful Vajrayana practice, is to love other people enough that you want to dance between a billion planets and help them. Okay, keep that vision in your mind, and it's, it's, it's as powerful as Tantra. Okay, keep that vision in your mind. Okay. Then he says in the next sentence, Di me par mitse ritong de kyote. Ritong, ri means a mountain. Uh, like when we do the mandala, we say ri jaburiro, which means a mountain, right? Mount Meru. And uh, tong means, you know, empty. So ri tong means you climb up to the Himalayan mountains, you find a cave, and you start meditating. Shen jindashi gongku che kyang. Doesn't matter what you do. By the way, Tim, the cool is new for you. K-H-U-L, and that means act like you're doing something, <laughs> okay? Like you go through the motions, it's cool. Uh, it doesn't mean cool, okay? Uh, so when you add it to a verb, it means, yeah, yeah, you, you look like you're a meditator. You look like, oh, you went up on a mountain and you're sitting in a cave and you look like you're meditating. You're going through all the motions, che kyang, but sangi ge gobanda chung se kyang nyeru mendoe, if you don't have this bodhisattva's vision, you can spend a whole lifetime in a meditation cave in the Himalayas and you will not get closer, Nyeru. You will not get closer to Buddhahood at all, Chungse. Okay? You will not get closer to Buddhahood if you don't have this vision. Okay? So this is an important new word for everybody. Tudangitil. Say, Tugdam. Till. Okay, to dangi till. Till means the palm of your hand, and it also means the sole of your foot. <laughs> okay, this is where you get your wheels when you get the marks of a Buddha, for example, on your till. Okay, but in Tibetan, spoken Tibetan, 
When you say, uh, put it in your palm of your hand, similar to the title of this book, it means keep that as your main practice, okay? There's something, you got a picture for me? <laughs> yeah. Keep this feeling, not next, yeah, in the palm of your hand, okay? It means, til means keep that as your number one practice, okay? Tukdam. It means in the palm of your hand in Tibetan means keep that vision of you dancing between planets. Keep that as your main, main, main practice, okay? That's called that practice that's in the middle of the palm of your hand. It's something you carry around all the time, okay? All right. Uh, let's go back to the Tibetan. This is the most beautiful part of this Tibetan, and I'm going to say that about a hundred times. Uh, if you just know the instructions, okay, you need the instruction manual for how to get bodhicitta. That's all. He says, that's all. Look, there's one page list, stuff you have to do. Then you get bodhicitta, okay? Just look, there's a very easy list. You just follow seven instructions and you get there okay so let's do it together okay just seven instructions you don't have to meditate for 20 years there's just seven steps seven easy steps just do them and then you get it okay good too good so mengak not too good so means our lama impressed on us just do those i'm going to teach you some instructions and you just follow them okay Every time that you start a Dharma teaching, you have to get your students into the mood. You know, you have to say, look, you know, the virus was nothing. You know, uh, four million people, three million people die, it's nothing. Seven pe billion people died, that's something. Eight billion people died, that's something, okay? So don't forget, why are we doing Lam Rim? The virus was nothing. Three million people is nothing. Seven billion people are going to die if we don't do something. They're not going to die from the virus. They're going to die from getting old and dying, okay? We already had a virus before the virus. It was called living, you know? And we're all going to die from it, you know? So uh, he says, don't forget the motivation. Why we are here, why we are studying Lamrim, don't forget, okay, that... On the 17th day, the teacher, Pabonko Rinpoche, reminded us why we were here, okay? So never forget. Mundu jita song is sachin nam sung jay. That jay means afterwards, okay? And it means he went through the outline that we covered in the last course, which I just did with you, the 10 benefits of bodhicitta, okay? Chanchuki sengi penyun dan tangyong. Chanchuki sengi penyun means he, he reviewed the 10 benefits of this vision of a bodhisattva, which we just did in the last class. And he talked about, you're going to build the seven steps to bodhicitta. You're going to build them on upeksha. What's upeksha? Timothy. Upeksha. Equanimity. Yeah, so don't forget you, you got to have equanimity before you can build love on top of it, okay? You have to treat people equally before you can learn to love people, okay? Before you can really learn to love people, you have to see people as equal, okay? So he, he explained it. Kyar Shed Zay means he, ex he repeated from the last class, and then we went on to the new class. So here's the new class. Dene Chanchu Sam Jongi Menga Dungi Dumbo Ni Marshe Yina. You guys should learn the word marche, okay, marche in the second line, first part of the second line here. Yeah, marche, and this is what we're going to focus on today, and it's called marche, okay. Marche means realize they are your mother, okay. Marche means realize they are your mother. This is the first step to developing that bodhisattva's vision, okay. You have to understand they are your mother, okay, Marshe Yinla. Then he says, Di Gyula Ke Shintika, Di Gyula Ke Shintika. 
It's extremely difficult to reach, okay? This gyu means mind. To develop this in your mind is extremely difficult, okay? To, to really believe that the people around you have been your mother is extremely difficult, okay? But if you don't get past through this first step of the seven, you can forget trying to be a bodhisattva. If you don't get to the point where you realize that all the people around you have been your mom before, forget being a bodhisattva, not possible, okay? So, okay, but Bhagavad Gita says, look, I know it's difficult, it's not easy, but we got to start there. You got to recognize that everyone has been your mother, okay? Dila nenten bege means, so you got to work hard on this, okay? You got to focus at the beginning on treating, seeing people have been your mom. That's all. You have to focus on that at the beginning. Okay, uh, then he says, Nyen means relation, like relative in your family. Nyengitartu means ultimate relative, which is your mom. Okay. Marshete. Digila makina chanjukisam kawa chepayin. Uh, if you can't recognize that everybody around you has been your mom, then you don't have the kelwa. What's that mean, you guys? Do you remember Jigme Kelwa? You don't have Kelwa. Yeah. Che means like Dorji Chipa. What's that mean? You cut you cut the possibility of Buddhahood. If if you can't reach the state of mind where you see that everyone has been your mom, Kawa Che means you don't have the good karma to be a, a Buddha. You will never be a Buddha. Kawa Che. That karma seed is cut in you. Okay? You don't have a choice. You have to you have to work on this idea that everyone has been your mom. The most important one. I love this picture of my mom. This is me uh, with my mom. And uh, I don't know. I, I, and I, I tell you, I'm 68 years old. My mom died uh, over 40 years ago. Uh, and I don't think about her as much as I used to. You know, I, I mean, I used to think about her all the time. I used to cry all the time. Uh, and then slowly, as you get older and older and older, and you start, you don't think about your mom as much. But if you do think about your mom, the, the point of this meditation is, let's go back to remembering what our mom did for us. And let's go back to remembering that everyone has been my mother, okay? He says, Shen Samotomani Sogni Rikbe Gonamdang Mambone Sam Chokpe. Look, you can meditate on emptiness, it's okay. You can learn all the arguments for, for emptiness. Uh, yeah, you can spend your time. Rikbe Gonamdang Mambo means you can use logic and reasonable thinking to establish Samotomani, profound emptiness. Chokpe means, yeah, yeah, you can do it. Chokpe means, yeah, you can. You can spend your time like that. Getting to see that everyone has been your mom is not as hard as that, okay? I admit, it's harder to see emptiness, okay? Uh, that's, that's, I, 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 I understand that seeing emptiness is difficult. And yeah, if you, if you tell me, is bodhicitta easier or is emptiness easier? I gotta say, maybe emptiness is really hard. But dila lung shi ki samlang sambe ting ne ngeshe nye pa shi chunkala. And but I have to say something about recognizing that everyone around you is your mom. It's not gonna be enough to just think about it. Okay, you can't sit there. Oh, Geshe said, everyone's been my mom, okay? So you're not going to get to Bodhicitta that way. It's not enough. He says, Wang Nun Chiki Jindang, those of you 
who are, have a high spiritual IQ, Rigpa, you're going to have to use, you're going to have to think your way through this kind of love. You're going to have to think your way through this kind of love, and then you can reach it. But you got to learn to think clearly, okay? You, clear thinking is how you're going to reach this kind of love. Not by saying, oh, my mom was so beautiful, and I love my mom, and, and I feel good about my mom, and I wish that my mom was still alive. That's okay. But if you don't think your way through it, he says, you will never reach bodhicitta. You have to think your way to that kind of love. Okay, Gershing. Then he quotes Namdal. Okay. Namdal is a book by Master Dhammakirti. It's called Pramanavartika. It's a commentary on accurate perception. And it is the Mother Buddhist book about uh, clear thinking, how to be, how to think clearly. The next picture here, you can see uh, smoke uh, coming up out of a forest. And this picture is extremely important for a Buddhist, okay? This picture, if a Buddhist sees this picture, they say, ah, I know what you're talking about. I know what you're talking about. Under that smoke, there's definitely a fire. In the forest, there's a big red fire behind the green trees, but we can't see it, right? All we can see is the smoke. If there's smoke, there's fire. If there's smoke, there's fire. In this case, in the Lam Rim, the fire means everyone you ever met in your life was your mom. That's the fire. What's the smoke? We have to look for the smoke. We have to look for the proof that the people around me have been my mom. Okay? We have to try to find the proof. The smoke is the proof that there's a fire. Now, what's the proof that everyone has been my mom? You know, guess what? Give me the proof. It's not enough for the Lama to describe it to you. And it's not enough to meditate about how much you love your mom. You must understand the reason why everyone has definitely been your mom. Okay? There's no choice. You, you, you got to use a special kind of thinking to prove to yourself beyond a doubt that everyone has been your mom. And until you go through that mental exercise, it's hopeless. You, you won't be able to get bodhicitta. It's never going to happen, okay? So now we're going to go on a big trip in the next class. The next class, a long class, okay? So but get some popcorn before you start the next class. And I'm not going to stop. It might take a while, okay? But we're going to go. He mentions Dharmakirti. And he mentions that Dharmakirti proved that everyone has been your mom, but he doesn't give you the whole proof. So guess where we're going to go? We're going to go to Dharmakirti, and we're going to go through Dharmakirti's proof. It's tough, and it's delicious, okay? So I'll see you in the next class. We'll prove that everyone's been your mom, okay? See you then.